all sorts of places. I coached for Bobby Charlton Sports, first of all. <laughs> that was a great experience. I just uh, started doing some courses for him and met him. And I worked for him over two or three years here in the UK and in Saudi Arabia as well. So they were just the normal sort of soccer courses, the soccer camps, that sort of thing, you know. Um, and this was a long time ago. I, I had the great fortune of uh, he'd retired from professional football then at this uh, sports company. And I had the great fortune of playing a couple of games with him as well, which was was terrific experience here in the UK and in, in Saudi as well. So that was great. And I did some work for Manchester City uh, on their community programme when it started, an FA skills programme. And then on from there, really, just trying to get any coaching experience anywhere that I could. Mm. I played in non-league, so I coached in non-league. And then I got into managing in non-league. Uh, various clubs and finishing at Cheltenham Town, uh, where it's obviously full time, and I managed the FA eleven as well. So I really enjoyed still the non-league um, setting. You know, I'm going to a non-league game tonight. Actually, <laughs> my spare time uh, must be crazy. <laughs> um, and then the last fifteen years has been in recruitment. You know, as a scout, mm -hmm. nearly twelve of those years up until November just gone. I've been with Chelsea in the academy there. Mm -hmm. uh, where I was head of uh, integration recruitment. So sort of senior team leading roles in uh, the recruitment team in the academy in what's probably one of the best academies in the world, certainly if not the best. Great experience and lots of great people and um, really enjoyed it a lot. So that's why I really have got to understand academy scouting and recruitment. I came out there in November, started the business and away we go. Perfect. We will get into the scouting and uh, your your business in a second. But I want to ask you, because at the moment, obviously, Saudi Arabia is is very popular. Um, so what, what was that like coaching out there? Uh, first of all, physically, it was difficult mm. um, because it's very hot. Yeah, uh, We would do coaching sessions at six o'clock at, at night and it's still very hot. And I struggled at first to deal with that. But then... I was given a tip, which is a very old-fashioned tip. I don't think you do it now, to take salt tablets, right? Uh, which you could just buy from Boots or any chemist in those days. And as soon as I started taking them, I, I felt better and it was, was okay, you know, because it just helps you rehydrate and, and build up uh, sort of uh, your, your inner system. And that was, it was an interesting challenge. When I was there... One of the big clubs there asked Bob if he would recommend someone to be um, head of uh, director of football development in the club, to particularly to develop a youth system. And he recommend, he asked me if I would be interested. And I had sort of mixed feelings about it. I've got a big family, although they're a lot younger there, weren't so many of them. Um, but the money was was going to be great. And so I, I was up for it if, if the conditions were right. Mm -hmm. But then it was all part of a bigger deal with Bobby Charlton Sports being doing a load of marketing for them and all that fell through. So my job fell through as well. So I would have stayed there longer, I suppose, if the right thing had come together. But the game was um, not what it is now, clearly. Uh, the facilities were good. They'd had a lot of Brazilian coaches uh, prior to, to me going over and, and they wanted... I think a bit more of the British, uh, more direct football, which was the vogue at the time. Uh, so I could coach that. So that, that would have been a really interesting um, challenge. Uh, but for one reason, I didn't come off. But I've always enjoyed travelling. I've, I've been fortunate enough to travel all over the world, coaching and working in, in football and in sport. Um, but Saudi was, was, was an interesting place to go. Nice. Love that. So tell us a little bit about your your business then. So okay, so when um, last summer, I, I'm writing a book on, on scouting called The Scouting Game, nice. which will be out in uh, towards the end of the year. And so the publishers said that, suggested that I started trying to promote or build the brand, you know, and started doing some videos. My wife came up with a format. We just started last summer doing videos on Instagram and, and what have you, really just to raise the profile of the book. Um, but the responses we got for it were terrific. You know, we were getting 50 odd thousand views for, for our, uh, videos from nothing, you know. And a lot of questions from parents, particularly, how do I know if my kid is any good? 
how can Mikey get scouted? What will scouts look for? How can they get into academy football? Or there seemed to be a real dearth of feedback for parents mm. uh, uh, from an independent, knowledgeable sort of perspective. So we clearly thought, well, there's a business here doing this. Let's give it a try. And so we launched it. And the idea is that we will assess players independently mm. uh, from seven upwards up to senior ages. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we base it on getting videos and I, I can go through the process in a bit, but yeah. that concept of would people be interested in paying for an independent player assessment was at the heart of what we did. No one else is doing it um, mm-hmm. anywhere that we've come across and certainly no one with 30 years in the game like me and who knows the highest standards so can hopefully place the standard of any player they're assessing in, in the right way and, and identify particularly what they need to work on and how they can go forward. And it's just boomed. We're assessing players from all over the world, a lot of American players, um, a lot from um, sort of random countries. Julie, I did one, uh, on which I did the presentation this morning, actually, of a lad in Kazakhstan, an under-19 player who's very good, actually. The lad from Cyprus last week, Ireland, mm-hmm. Australia, and and quite a few in the UK. So that's really taken us a bit by surprise and we've had to set up much more of a structure to deal with that. So I do hope to go back into academy recruitment somewhere because that's what I still feel is my sort of uh, home ground really in that way. So we're having to adjust the business as we go along. Nice. So what's the name of, of your business? The Scouting Game. So everything is called The Scouting Game. The book's called The Scouting Game. And the business is called The Scouting Game. And all of our social media can be tracked from our YouTube channel through to Insta and what have you on The Scouting Game. And and that's why it's on on the badge as well. So we've got the logo as well. So uh, everything is through The Scouting Game, Mm -hmm. which is copyrighted trademark, I might add. Fantastic. (laughs) So any coach watching The Scouting Game, what's the website? Uh, it's uh, the scoutinggame.co.uk, uh, and that's up there with, with information about us. But Instagram is probably our prime uh, sort of uh, channel, really, for communication. So we're putting videos up every other day up there through our social media team, mm-hmm. which we now have, and um, they're going really well. So we have all sorts of things on, on there. Um, guides to how to get into scouting we do webinars as well we did the first one a month or so ago about how to get into scouting we've got another one next week a, a parent's guide to academy football so we're trying to respond to the market really because we're creating a market as it's a completely new concept of a business as well as trying to to meet a market 100 percent, love that so what tell us chris a bit about the process when you work with with players or parents so how do you onboard them? What's, what's so, the general process? So all our advertising is through social media. Everything is driven through social media. So we put the videos up. That's how we started. That's how people began to contact us. And so we stick with doing that. So we go through Instagram, so um, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and uh, then we collect them together on a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Um, but Insta is, is the main driver for us. And so... We have a social media agent who advises us and we have now a team that that help put them together. So my wife and I might record a basic video or I might, but then it's over to them and and, and they put it up there straight away. So that attracts attention. People contact us and say, yeah, how can I get assessed or how can my child get assessed? We get them to send us two full match videos, not clips, because we need to see through a match video what a player doesn't do as well as what they do do. Two full match videos because one game, some will have a great game or a poor game, you need a bit of objectivity. We then go through them, whoever is doing the scouting assessment and our analyst, performance analyst as well. We use software to help us analyse it more time efficiently uh, through um, in-play sports, which is very good. And uh, then we prepare an assessment of the player, which is an 11-page assessment, we really sort of take their game apart, technical, physical, psychological, tactical elements to their game. 
and, and identify strengths and weaknesses, which we illustrate with the video clipping mm -hmm. that for the videos that have come in. And then we crucially point to how, um, what does need working on, how they can work on it and what their next steps might be, directing them to wherever that might be, one-to-one -one coaching or strength and conditioning, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. and, and then we present that back, which is mostly me presenting back via Zoom. Yeah. Um, and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to present that back. And then we send all that to the, to the customer. So that's, that's our, our, our format and our process. And uh, we try and make sure that it's very practical, as I say, with real practical steps of what they can do next and, and come out of it. And a number of people who've had the assessments done say, right, we want to come back in three months and have another one. So to see how they, the player has improved. Uh, if they've taken on board what we've said. So that's great because you're beginning to identify repeat business and obviously advertising as well through podcasts such as this one, mm -hmm. which we do uh, quite a few of as it's a new concept. Um, so that's that's how our business works, really. Uh, so it's a mix of my wife and I have set it up. It's her idea and, and she runs the business end of it. I just talk about football <laughs> and do the analysis and present back. And then we have the nice. performance analysts and the social media help. And so a little team is emerging. Yeah. And if I go back to full-time football, uh, obviously we've got to find ways to manage the business without me having to do so much. Yeah. So quick, quick question here. Uh, and we, get, we work with some coaches that... Uh, very similar to what you do with, with your wife, right? The... the the coach will coach and then the, the wife kind of does the admin stuff. How, how has that been? Because, well, talk us through how, what makes a really good uh, partnership in that sense, when you're working with your, with your wife or your husband, what would you yeah. want for that to work? I think you have to have uh, different things you bring to the table. That's the thing. Um, my wife is, is, is very entrepreneurial. She comes from a sport background. She was a gymnast, gymnastics coach, and has a gymnastics business. So she, she has she runs the business now. And so that business side of it, how to organize the customer service side of it and so on, and then leading into even the finances and, and business structure in that way, mm -hmm. she brings that to, to the table. My end is, is the football expertise end, you know? Yeah. So we try and, and uh, keep to our respective areas. <laughs> uh, uh, but basically, I found the the best way forward is just do what I'm told. <laughs> because she, she she's much brighter than I am when it comes to uh, the business side. The yeah. way, even the way we structure the videos, which is a very sort of uh, informal, uh, normal videos, general run of videos, it's a very informal way of doing it that she came up with. Mm -hmm. That when the social media agent got onto us, she said, "Look, we love this very." Amateurish, very at home, very simple. Julie just comes in into my office and asks me a question, and then I, I I talk. And she usually takes the Mickey out of me one way or another as well. <laughs> so that's all very normal. But that was her idea to structure it that way, and that's worked really well. Okay. And so um, yeah, I look after the football end, uh, and she looks after the business end. And so we've both got our spheres of influence, I think. And then my son is one of the analysts. Uh, daughter is uh, one of the social media people, so it's quite a family involvement. So everyone has their say, you that's know. Fantastic, um, and that's good because we're bringing different different expertises. My son, for example, has a degree in sports performance analysis from Cardiff Met, so mm. he knows what he's doing on that side and sorted the software out with Chris Gill in play. And we're getting together good people around us, and and that works. So it's a pro proper family run business. Yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I was at a game last week, an only game with my youngest son, who does some scouting as well, some opposition scouting for a non-league team locally. And he was saying, look, well, am I going to get some work out of this as well? Yeah. You know, So there might be someone else in the in the family coming into the fold uh, soon as well, especially as I've got to do, start cutting down what I do, you know. Fantastic. So t tell us a little bit, wh where are these players coming from that contact you? Is it the youth youth game? Is it the semi-pro, the professional? Who who tends to contact you for this type of service? 
all of the above. It's remarkable. You mm -hmm. know, the range of players. The next one, the next assessment I'm doing is from an under 10 in um, the southeast, uh, in Kent. Mm -hmm. The one I did this morning in the presentation, as I said before, was an under 19 from Kazakhstan, playing at a professional level. Uh, so I can... It, it, it can be, and that's one of the great things about it. The variety is terrific. Yeah. Um, players from seven upwards, as I say, up to senior level. I did one on a, a, a boy who's an under 15 international for Cyprus last week. Mm -hmm. And the next one could be a kid who's, you know, just starting out in the game or, or on the edge of non-league, whatever. That's great from a business point of view because the, the, the model works for everybody. Yeah. But it's demanding on who can do it. Now, fortunately, I've been in the game a long time. I've done all the sorts of scouting that there is, different sorts of scouting, coaching, managing, mm -hmm. at all levels, from local grassroots football through to professional level. So you need to have that range. Otherwise, you've no frame of reference, you know? Yeah. If you're watching an, an under-10 kid, which I'm just about to do on grassroots, and you've got to know grassroots football at that level and academy football at that level. But the next one might be an under 18 who's playing in, you know, in a in non good non league step two, three football. So you have to know those levels. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the problems, I think, for other people who may have tried this sort of thing before is that you have to have, if you're going to offer it to everybody, you have to know those standards right across the board. And that's difficult to do unless you have a whole group of people to do it which yeah. then it brings other issues with it, you know. Fantastic. So something we help coaches with when they're starting their, their academy businesses is how to run evaluation sessions. So essentially like trial sessions. So what's a piece of advice you can give a coach when, when they have a player come to their academy? What should they be looking for? Well, if they're looking to evaluate the player as to whether they're, they're, they're good enough, then they need to know the standard that they're comparing them to. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say you need to know your elephant. And this came from years ago when I was in Nigeria, in Lagos. I wanted to buy one of those elephants, you know, that you get carved out of wood. Oh, so I thought you actually guy, wanted to buy an elephant. Yeah, well, that would have be, <laughs> been difficult bringing it back. Wouldn't it? No, this is a you know, little statue. Yeah. And uh, so a Nigerian guy I know took me to, into the back streets of Lagos uh, where they were actually made them. And I watched this guy in this dusty tent, it was really, take a block of wood and create an elephant out of it. And I said to him, that is fantastic. How, do you, how can you just take a block of wood and make an elephant out of it? And he said, it's easy. You just knock off the bits that don't look like an elephant. And I thought well, that's a nice line, you know, and it's a good line for the tourist sort of thing. But I kept thinking about it and kept coming back to it. And I thought, well, that of course it's true. But to do that, you really have to know what an elephant looks like in detail. You really have to know. So when you're looking at your block of wood as a coach or as a scout and it's a player, if you don't know what an elephant looks like, you are not going to know how close that is to an elephant. You really have to know your elephant. And elephants vary, <laughs> as we know. So if you're assessing a player, are they good enough to come into my team? Then hopefully you'll know the standard of your team. If you're saying... Is the coach good enough to, for me to invest time working in to try and get them to a higher level? You've really got to understand what that high level will, will require, yeah. what the gap is. Yeah. And similarly, from my point of view, if I'm assessing a player as to how close they are to academy standard, I've got to know what that standard is. And that is that Cat 3 Academy, yeah. Cat 2 or Cat 1. And so... You have to really know your elephant, and, and that is the starting point. Without that, everything else could be completely adrift. You have to know the standard. And this is why I always say to scouts as well, you get appointed as a scout to a club and you're desperate to go out and find players. The first thing you've got to do is watch, re-watch, re-watch, re-watch your own team, your own players, to know what you've got, what your standard is. Otherwise, how can you go out and say, yeah, that one will fit, if you don't know that standard? So that's the key, knowing your elephant. Knowing your elephant. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, that's great, great piece of advice. Um, for those coaches watching, I guess that's that's kind of like when you bring on a client, knowing where that client wants to go, 
Yeah. So if that client wants to play uh, college soccer, it's how what's the process to get them there? Yeah, um, exactly. Now we've done a few assessments on players who are going into the uh, the college scholarship process. So typically the couple that we picked up have been around 15, 16. So they're preparing, you know, they've still got time, a season or so away, but they want to know how good are we compared, you know, how what do we need to work on? Yeah. Whether they're, they're looking ahead and that's fine because you've got time. So if you're able to identify, well, look, you need one-to-one -one coaching, but you need it on this. Now there's loads of one-to-one -one coaches out there. Hopefully, uh, you know, a good number of your coaches that watch your, your stuff are one-to-one -one coaches, and that's great. Yeah. My um, bugbear, though, is if you send a kid along to one-to-one -one coach and they say, right, this is this is what we're doing. This is our, our sort of curriculum. Well, that's not one-to-one -one coaching. Mm. That's just going on to a coaching session. Yeah. They're going to know what does that player actually need. They have to assess the player. Yeah. And obviously, that's where an assessment like ours in, in great detail can help. Well, that's the case then for these kids who are getting ready for, for scholarship or want to get into the scholarship stream is identifying what they need to work on. And then they can take that assessment along to a one-to-one -one coach and say, look, I need to work on this. So, for example, they might say, I need to work on my one-to-one -one defending, get my body shape right, get my position right, channeling a player. Now, good one-to-one -one coach, okay, we can do that. Or they might say, I need to work on my, you know, my weaker foot, whatever it might be, or taking the ball on the half turn or whatever. If they can go along to a one-to-one -one coach and say, this is specifically what I need, then it makes the, the, the process so much easier. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to do that, someone has to assess them and give them feedback. And that's where we can come in, obviously, when that's concerned. Same with strength and conditioning. If we say, look, you need to be quicker, it's no good me referring them to a strength and conditioning coach that is just a general strength and conditioning coach because they've got to be referred to someone who knows how to build their power yeah. to help make them quicker. Mm -hmm. So in our business, we decided right at the beginning, we only actually refer people to one one-to-one -one coach, who's Saul Isaacs and Hurst, who you know, mm -hmm. one strength and conditioning coach, Ruben Tavares, mm -hmm. uh, one agent, because we get asked a lot for agents, and, and that's um, Division X. And so we've no commercial connection with any of those, but I will only refer people that I've worked with, uh, my cu customers, to people that I trust yeah. and that, who know what they're doing. Now, fortunately, Saw and the one-to-one -one coaching, Ruben, they also work through video. So it doesn't matter where the players are around the world. And Division X, uh, Zabby, the best in Humphreys, uh, it's, they're an international agency backed mm -hmm. by a law firm. So they can work with people out around the world. But we thought right at the beginning, we're going to make it simple and just refer. Of course, people can go to anyone they want, mm -hmm. but if they want a, a recommendation, we're very selective. Um, and so it, it's, it's, it's knowing the standard and knowing specifically what the player needs to work on mm -hmm. that will affect their game and improve them and how to do that. That's the key mm -hmm. for us in our referrals. Great. Perfect. Now, if a coach watching, because I know... I'm a coach myself and I get asked this a lot when parents, parents might ask the question, how can my child get scouted? Yeah. So as a coach that has a one-to-one -one training business or a private academy, how can they build a network of scouts or college recruitment department? How do you build that network? Obviously this is fantastic now because we've got you on here. So coaches can go to you, but if yeah. we if you're not around, how can they build that, that scouting network? Well, very much scouting is about a network. You're absolutely right. So for, if you were a scout, the, the, my advice would always be build your network. And if you're a coach wanting to build a business, then you want a network and referrals. So if you look, how did I meet the people that I refer people to then? Saul was working at Chelsea when I went there. So we worked together. Uh, Ruben was referred to me by someone, uh, uh, a parent whose um, son I did an assessment on. And they said, you've got to meet this guy because he's, he's really, really top strength and conditioning. And so we met and, and we got to know each other and, and away we go. So there have been quite random things. The agents, because a guy that I used to work with 
25 years ago in non-league. I was my assistant manager when I was managing a couple of clubs. He works for this this particular agency, scouting agency. So their connections fairly, can seem fairly random in terms of looking for, for a pattern, but that's networking, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So I think the thing to do is you have to have, make it easier for people to connect up with you when you're in a network. So traditionally, you would give people a business card, that sort of thing. Well, now, like lots of people, I have an electronic business card, so I can just put it on their phone and they've got all my contact details. Yeah. But you've got to spread that word around. And then, of course, the other way, the way that we built the business is social media. Mm-hmm. That's the new network, well, not even new networking, is it? That's networking now. Mm-hmm. And so on LinkedIn, I don't know how many connections I've got on LinkedIn, over 2,000, I'm sure. Um, so if I put something up on there, I know it's going to get out to a good audience straight away. Yeah. And so you can't rely on any one channel of connection and you have to be active in lots of different ways and be making it easy for people to connect with you through different ways. Mm -hmm. Social media is the easiest. Um, It's also a busy space, uh, but that's, you know, that's entirely how we built the business really Um, in terms of advertising and connecting in that way. And it's opened up so many things for us. But you've got to do it on 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 different um, different channels, and you've got to get some advice pretty soon as to, as to how to do it and and how to target people and and this sort of thing. And that became apparent to us early on. Unfortunately, we we were able to connect up with good people, mm-hmm. so that's how it works. There's no simple trick to networking, or if there is, it's escaped me in 30 years in the game. <laughs> you know, I, but the other the other thing is for coaches. I I met loads of my best contacts through coaching courses i did all my coaching coaching qualifications uh for example that i was on the very first uefa b course in this country in in the uk 1997 um so i've loads of contacts that you make through training courses i've done all my fa talent id levels as well and again you, that's one of the best things about qualifications and courses you meet loads of people and, you know, that's really a good way of building networks. I used, when I was a younger coach, I used to go to coaching association mm-hmm. meetings and in-service training, anything, really. Then I would get in touch with, this is a long time ago, I would get in touch with coaches that I admired. I would just write them a letter, which is what you did then, for email, yeah. and say, can I come and watch you coach? Yeah. And surprisingly, some of them came back and said yes, you know. So I went and watched Dario Gradi coach at Crew, who was just terrific coaching the eleven side. It's like he had them all on on strings, you know. It was fantastic. He referred me to Dave Sexton and so on. So these were all great coaches in, back in my era. And so I just asked and went along and watched and learned from that any experience I could get, you know. Yeah. And it all part of process of of building building that net, that network you know that, those contact lists in it in your phone as it would be now yeah. um, so it's a continuous process of effort on a lot of different fronts um, but all aimed at connecting up with people fantastic all right well chris as we as we begin to wrap up uh we just want to thank you for coming on uh sharing Pleasure. your your story with us uh, we're going to put all the links to your to your business uh, below this video so coaches can go and have a look what you're doing even get in contact with you um i want to wish you good luck with your book thank you uh, i'm definitely gonna buy it <laughs> so let me know where, when it's out yeah and um and i hope to to connect with you in the near future yeah thank you Lo. excellent to speak to you Fantastic. good luck